rationalize the denominator, 2 over 3 minus radical 2. That's the neat. Uh, what do you think we should do first? I'm not sure. OK, Ryan, how about you? Off of the last question and saying we have to multiply the square root of 2. Okay. Uh, in the other session, uh, if you had the single, single radical at the bottom of the fraction, we multiply it by itself and we eliminate the radical that way. But in this case, uh, we have more than one term. So when you have more than one term, uh, then you have to use. this uh, a minus b times a plus b property. Okay. Uh, Ryan, can you tell me what is a minus b times a plus b is equal to? a squared minus b squared. Very good. That would be the difference of the square. Now, these square would help us to eliminate any radical that if I have for a and b. So you see my a is 3, but my b is radical 2. So if I multiply 3 minus radical 2 by, it's called conjugate, I have 3 minus radical 2 multiplied by something here, which is called conjugate of that, which is 3 plus radical 2. Then what, what's going to happen here is we eliminate the radical altogether. Uh, Sunit, can you tell me what do you get here? What would be the result of this if I use the difference of square property? Um, 9 minus 2 square to the square root. So the first term is correct. 3 square root would be 9. 9 minus, what is the square root of 2 squared? 2. Right, then we've got the square root of 4, which is the square root of 4 is 2. So we, ha we have 7 here. That's how you get 7. So uh, going back to my original question, Ryan, what do we have to multiply this fraction with to eliminate the radical at the bottom of the fraction? Oh. Ryan, are you is, there? There? is it? Wait, I don't know. I'm not sure. What we say right here, we multiply 3 minus radical 2, which is right here, by its conjugate. We call it conjugate. Okay. So is it the 3 plus radical 2? Right, exactly. So if you have two terms, you have to multiply the top model fraction by its conjugate in order to eliminate the, the radical. Because we just showed you that 3 minus radical 2 times 3 plus radical 2, that would be a difference of square. And these squares would cause both of these terms, A and B, would be free of radical if there is a radical. You know. So the first term would be 9. The second term was square root of 2 squared turns to 2. So that the whole thing would be equal to 7. So Salif, can you tell me what the final answer would be here? Hmm. 6 plus 2 to the square root of 2 over 7. Right, so let's write, let's write this as, for now, 2 times 3 plus radical 2. Now we move 
over 7, all the radicals to the top, so we don't have any radical at the bottom of the fraction anymore. That's how we rationalize it. Uh, so uh, in this case, uh, if I distribute this, of course I would get this choice here. I would get D. I get 6 plus 2 radical 2 over 7. So if you have two terms at the bottom of the fraction here, you have to multiply top and bottom of the fraction by its conjugate. So the conjugate of A minus B is A plus B. The conjugate of 3 minus radical 2 is 3 plus radical 2. So we get the difference in square, and then the squares would cause all those radicals to disappear, so we don't have any radical at the bottom of the fraction. But in the, like in the other session we had, if I had only one radical at the bottom of the fraction, it just simply multiplied by itself to eliminate the radical.